Come on, family, can we begin to put our hands together? Come on. Come on, family, just begin to stretch your hands towards heaven. Come on, do you, do you believe that he's holy? Oh, come on, family, talk back to me. Do you believe that he's holy? Come on, is he still the reason for the season? Come on, family, just begin to stretch your hands. Heavenly Father, we honor you in this place. We feel your presence in this place. There is nothing like your presence. Thank you for dwelling with us today. Come on, family. Come on, just whisper thank you to him right now. Come on, let your father know how much you love him. Just begin to whisper thank you. Just begin to whisper that you, that you need him right now. Just begin to whisper to say thank you for always being here for me and my family. Come on, somebody say thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I might not have a lot of words right now, but at least I can say thank you, Father. I might can't put all the words to what you did, but I can at least say thank you, Father. You know, Psalms 100 verse 5 reads, family. It says, for the Lord is good. Come on, somebody. And his faithful love endures forever. His faithfulness through all generations. Come on, somebody. This, this is a type of love that can't be stopped. This is a type of love that gets through every obstacle. This is a love that doesn't stop at your generation, but this is a love that began at the foundation, and this is a love that sees all through eternal. Can we receive our, our internal love that will speak to your family tree right now, that will speak to every demonic force that's trying to bring your family down. It will speak to every family stronghold. This is a love that was birthed in through a virgin named Mary, all because God had a plan for you and you and you and me. This is a love that can't be stopped. This is an eternal love. Come on. Through all generations. Through all generations. Come on, can we just begin to put our hands together? I'm going to dismiss the worship team. Can we put our hands together for our worship team? Just stay standing, family. I'm ready to preach. I don't know about you. Are you ready for the word? I'm ready to preach. You don't, you don't sound excited. You want me to sit back down, family? Just let me know. Come on, so good to hear you, Mr. Terry. Come on. My family, I got a word. Even God just spoke a little bit more to me just over there in the middle of worship. If you have your word, just grab Matthew chapter 2, verse 19. I'm going to be reading from the CSB. And if you're new here with our custom, we, we love to stand for the respect, the honor, of the word, but in a moment you'll be able to sit down and you'll be able to relax your feet. Hopefully you're not looking at the World Cup. God is judging you. But let's go in, family. We're, we're, we're family here. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us today. Verse 19, family, says this. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Here's what God just whispered to me over there in the middle of worship. Anthony, you can still have dreams in Egypt. Egypt. Oh, I, I'm going to get into the text, but you can still dream in Egypt. It, dreams just doesn't happen in Bethlehem. Come on. Dreams just doesn't happen in Jerusalem. Dreams just doesn't happen in Nazareth. But even in Egypt, God said, I can still make your dream. I can still speak to you right where you are, the place of Egypt, bondage. And Joseph was still receiving dreams. Dreams to not quit. Dreams to keep pushing. Dreams to not give up on the gift that God has given him. God will meet you right in Egypt and give you a dream to keep on pushing. Look to your neighbor right now. This is going to be a message today about you not quitting because God is still speaking to you right here. I told you last week Christmas isn't canceled because the gift is here and God is still speaking to you and your family and you might feel it this year has been a year when you've been in 
isolation, a year of sitting in Egypt, a year of bondage, a year of slavery, a year of draining tired of going through what you're going through. But God spoke to Joseph in Egypt. Mm, and he can speak to you in Egypt. Whew. Saying, get up. Or say it to yourself today, get up. Take the child and his mother. Matter of fact, take the gift. Oh my gosh. Take the gift and go to the land of Israel because those who intended to kill the child are dead. In the middle of worship, I just, I just saw death all around. And maybe this has been a year where some things been dying in your life. Maybe this has been a year where some things that's close to you have been falling off, falling apart. And you don't know why. You gave me this gift, God. How am I here in Egypt all by myself? Ooh. Things are dying everywhere. I was over there and things were dying. I came here to Jerusalem and things are dying. Now I'm all in Egypt all by myself with the gift that you have given me and things are dying. And God told Joseph, get up, get up. I still got a plan for you, get up. I still got my anointing on you, get up. I still put this gift inside of your, your, your wife, get, get, get up. I'm not done with you right here. I, I know you in Egypt, but it's time to get up because there's purpose with you. It is time to get up because I got a calling on you. Your story doesn't end right here in Egypt. I got a plan so you can get back to Nazareth so that your gift can do the calling that I sent them to do. That's my beloved son. There's a plan. You can't stay here, Joseph because somebody needs you to get back to Nazareth. Yeah. You can't stay right where you are because your family tree needs you to get back to Nazareth. Yeah. You can't stay right here. You can't live right here. There's somebody in your bloodline is waiting for you to shine your light and get back to Nazareth so that they won't live a life of experience of being in Egypt. Somebody is waiting for you to shine your light. You can't stay here. Whoa. I can't stay here. I can't live right here in depression. I can't live right here in anxiety. I can't live right here overwhelming. When I got a wife, when I got three sons, somebody better talk back to me today. I can't stay in Egypt. I got to get back to Nazareth. So he, so he got up, took the child and his mother and entered the land of Israel. But when he heard that Oculus was ruling over Judea in a place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the region of Galilee. And then he went and settled in a town called Nazareth to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Verse 23, you're going to be, you're going to take your seats. This is what hit me, family. Then he went and he settled in. What a journey. A journey of receiving the word started in Nazareth. Travel to Bethlehem. Travel from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. <laughs> Travel from Jerusalem back to Bethlehem. From Bethlehem, he went to Egypt. And then from Egypt, he went to Nazareth. It, they were on a journey. That's what I'm trying to, trying to get. They, it was a grind just to get back here. A lot of times with the nativity story, we can talk about the manger. We can talk about the three the shepherds, the wise men. We can talk about Bethlehem. But nobody wants to talk about the journey to Egypt. 
Nobody wants to talk about that. It was a grind to release this gift. It was a grind to protect this gift. Look at the grind that Murray, come on pregnant woman, a mother's in the house. Can you imagine the grind she had to go through to release the gift? Can you imagine the grind that she had to go through to protect the gift? Jerusalem, Nazareth, Bethlehem, Judea, Israel, Egypt, just, just all over the place. When I was reading the text, maybe that was you this year. Family, family, marriage, marriage, kids, kids, job, job, health over here, taking care of health, taking care of Judea, over here, marriage, marriage, marriage. <sighs> Come on, somebody. <sighs> oh, my kids are acting up in school. I gotta get over here, gotta get over here. <sighs> my job is calling. Oh, I gotta get over here, I gotta get over here. My mental health, oh my gosh. I, got, I forgot about that. I'm going crazy. Come on, somebody talk back to me. I'm losing my mind, God. Church, ministry, oh, oh my God, I forgot. I forgot I'm a pastor, oh. <sighs> Jerusalem, Nazareth, Judea, Israel, Egypt, all over the place. Because God gave him a gift. <laughs> and the gift led him on a grind. Maybe this year has been a grind for you. Maybe this year has been a journey of releasing the gift that God has given you. Maybe this year has been a journey to protect the gift. If you're taking notes, family, just write this down. There's a gift in the grind. There's a gift in the grind. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for this word today. For our next few moments, Lord God, we ask that you just rest on our hearts. This is your house. Move. Do as you please. Whatever you want to do, this is your house. We receive your word on today. We honor you. We thank you. We love you. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen, amen. You can go ahead and have your seat, family. I'm going to dismiss Celebration Youth. Come on, your wonderful leaders are right there in the back. Life can be a grind, family. Come on, talk back to me. Say amen. amen. Come on, life can be a grind. But God's given you the grace to face whatever you are facing in this season. I said it before, come on, marriage whew, can be a grind. Come on, after the vows are said in sickness and in health, after you go through your premarital, it, it's a grind. Come on, talk back to me. Come on, talk back to me, married folks. Matter of fact, they probably need to change those vows. It, they left out some stuff right past the Brennan. It, it's not deep enough. Come on, Osa and Khadija, I married you guys back in, in August. We should have changed those vows a little bit. We should have got into the nitty gritty of it because marriage is a grind. You got to work this thing. In. Whatever you love and invest, you have to work communication. You have to work intimacy. You got to work being on one page. It is a grind. And after these vows, we got to tell people, be more honest, Pastor Brendan, that marriage is going to be a grind. You got to work this thing. These kids that God has given us, it can be a grind. After the, the name revealing in, the gender revealing in, after you gave birth, because I didn't give birth, I just held your hand and prayed for you. And after you gave birth, these kids can be a grind. Not just after they give birth and they send us home and, and the grind is over. No, the grind is just beginning because this is going to be a grind. We had to go up to Princeton school this past week. It is a grind. Lord, God, pray for my mind. It's a grind, family. Your, your, your health is a grind. I just wish that we could just take one month. God, just give us one month of eating good. One month of working out. And that can set you up for the rest of the year. Come on, family. You don't got to work out no more. You don't got to eat. You, can, you only got to count calories no more. Man, you can just do whatever you want to do. But no, health is a grind. 
You can't just invest temporary in it. It is a grind on this journey. Whatever you love, whatever you are investing in, it is going to be a grind. And maybe this year has felt like a grind for you. That you've been grinding to get to where you're going. Your career is a grind. To get to that dream job that you want to get to. The dream job that you believe that God has given you. Many no's. Many rejections. Many been, oh, being overlooked. It is, has been a grind. Is anybody in here? There's been times in your life right now that you felt like giving up because you're tired of the grind. I want to be honest today with your family. This is not a message just about being grateful. Because being honest, it's okay to say, I'm tired right now, Pastor Anthony. I understand that I'm grateful for what God has done in my life. I'm grateful for these kids. I'm grateful for the job. I'm grateful for to wake up and have a job on Monday morning. But God, it is a grind. Because I'm trying not to give up. It's been, I've been on this journey for a while, and here's what, here's what God has been teaching me in this season, family, that, that, that the grind can make you lose what's really important in your life. Amen. You can be on a grind for so long that you can really lose focus to the things that really matter in your life. See, you've been on this journey and you, you've been going and you're doing your thing and you've been grinding. But a lot of times the grind can actually get to you. So now the energy that you have, you're not putting it towards the things that are really important. You're putting it to low level things in your life. See, grinding so long can make us lose focus. And this is why we have to make sure we are attached to Jesus because Jesus will actually show us the things that really matter. You ever felt like you've been grinding so long now you just pouring energy into things that don't even matter anymore? Priorities are all messed up. Boundaries are all messed up because you've been in a grind. And this is what our life, this is what God is saying. A lot of us, we're caught in the middle of a grind right now and we're trying to figure out, are we pouring in the right bucket or are we pouring in a bucket that has a hole in it? And you're trying to figure it out. God, give me some more clarity. Give me some more wisdom because I'm caught in a grind and I don't know if I have anything else left to give. I'm caught in the middle of a grind. See, see, grinding too long can make you have thoughts of throwing in a towel. I just wonder, let's talk about Joseph. Let's give my guy Joseph some credit on today. Come on. We talk about Jesus. I love Jesus. We talk about Murray, come on. But nobody wants to talk about Joseph. He's just like a prop in the story sometimes. Give my man Joseph some credit, come on, man. Give my man Joe. I just wonder the thoughts of Joseph, that he's been on this journey of grinding, been on this journey that he didn't choose, come on. That he's been on this journey of trying to get to a place of understanding of why am I in the middle of Egypt all by myself? Come on, this is just not, no, but God, I'm going to go with you. No, I know Joseph probably had some questions. Why God? Why God? Why God? Is there anybody in here who's caught in a season and you're asking God, why? Why am I going through this? Why am I in the middle of Egypt? Why is this happening to me? What is going on in my life? And Joseph is caught in the middle of a grind, tired of pivoting. He went here, he went there. Anybody ever feel like you're just tired of pivoting, tired of making adjustments? And, 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 and where God showed me in the middle of this story with Joseph is that something good is coming from this. You got to receive that on today, family. I don't know who that word is for right now. You're caught asking God specific questions on why am I going through this? And God has shown you the reasons or the value in which you're grinding for. And you have got to receive his word on today and get to a place where your faith will give you understanding that you know what, God? I don't have the complete picture right now, but something good is coming from this grind. Something good is coming from this grind. You got to tell yourself on that today. 
that this grind is not in vain, that this grind is given purpose, that this grind is molding me, that this grind is producing something, that this grind is separating something, that this grind is sanctifying me for a moment of where God is getting ready to do something major in my life. This grind is bringing me closer to him. This grind is making me see God at an angle that I never saw him before. This grind is not in vain. This year is not in vain that, that God is doing something. And so when I was studying the text, family, because we can, we can easily understand Bethlehem. We can understand, oh, this is the prophecy. I, I understand why they need to go to Bethlehem. I understand the, the ancestry bloodline. Like I, I understand why they're going to Bethlehem. And I can understand Jerusalem. That's the temple. That's where the sanctification, I, I can understand the journey that God has Mary and Joseph on. But when I got the Egypt family, why would God send Joseph back to Egypt? See, a lot of times when we read this text family, we can easily look through it through the lenses of Western civilization. That, but a Hebrew audience a, a, a Hebrew audience reading this text, when they see Egypt, they automatically see bondage. Yes. When they see Egypt, they automatically see slavery. When, when they see Egypt, they automatically see freedom being, freedom being taken away. Why, why would God send Joseph back to a place that will remind him where his people were in bondage? Yes. Why would, why would God send Joseph back to a place where, where, where God told Moses that these, I mean, these uh, Egyptians that you see, you will no longer see anymore, that these warfare that you're going through, you won't experience it no more. Why would God send Joseph back to Egypt? See, 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 sometimes, family, what I'm learning, especially in this year, God, guys, is that in order to go forward, God will sometimes send you back to a place of the undone. Amen. That, that, that God will, will, will send you back to a place because there's some, there's some things still attached to you. Come on. See, see, Egypt represents the wilderness. Egypt represents bondage. Egypt represents a time, like I said, of, of depression, a, a time of, of shame. And, and maybe, maybe, I, I believe it with all my heart, maybe this has been a year for you when God has been sending you back to Egypt. Memories, past mistakes, things that, that, that you can't correct. It's now God is taking you back and now you got to face it face to face because what God is getting ready to do in 2023, he's setting you up for a breakthrough in your life. But you got to go back to Egypt. I don't know. Maybe this year has been a journey where you've been going back to Egypt, facing the things that God has called you to overcome, facing the mental capacity of your mind that God has said, no, you're, you're the head, you're not the tail. Facing the very thing that said, no, you are an overcomer. So I got to take you back to a place there to show you just as I delivered the Israelites, I would do the same for you. Egypt couldn't keep the Israelites down. Egypt couldn't keep Joseph and Murray down. Egypt would not keep you down as well. God would send you to a place so that he can show you that his hand is still covering you and anointing you. And he's still more bigger than that giant that's in the land of Egypt. Egypt. Egypt, Egypt. I, I was just thinking through Egypt. See, let, let me read the text in Matthew chapter 2, verse 13. It says this, after they were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, get up, take the child and his mother, flee to Egypt and stay there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and escaped to Egypt. He stayed there until Herod's death so that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say this with me, family. Out of Egypt. Out of Egypt. Out of Egypt. 
See, 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 Egypt, I said it before, is the place of the undone. And maybe you're in a season right now where God is undoing some things. Undoing some things in, in, in the past so, so that he can, he can send you forth. It's, the, the Egypt is representing the place of a change. See, see, Egypt is representing that God is turning some things into your favor. See, see, I want you to receive this word on today because, because maybe you're in Egypt right now and God is showing you that you just have to let some things fall so that God can bring it back in order. Amen. That Egypt represents that. It's the uncovering. It's the, the place of the undone. It's the place where you will see the hand of God move in your life. Maybe you're in a place of Egypt right now. Maybe your mental feels like it's in a place of Egypt. Maybe your heart feels like it's in a place of Egypt. And just like God took Joseph there to protect the gift, he's doing the same thing right for you today. Amen. Let, allow God to take you to Egypt because right in Egypt is where something beautiful is getting ready to bloom. It's right in Egypt that God will begin to speak to you like he never spoke to you before. It's in Egypt that God wants to touch a place in your heart that you've been covering up so long, but God has said, I'm taking you back to Egypt because I want to uncover some things because I want to speak to the pacificness right there in your life. I want to touch that right there. The very thing that you've been covering, the very thing that you've been hiding, you can't hide in Egypt because Egypt is the place of the uncovering. You can't cover this up anymore. I want to touch it. I want to speak to it. I want to heal it. And maybe this has been a year for you. Can I say this, family? We've been praying for you because God has you right where he wants you. He has you right where, you want, where he wants you, in the place of the undone. But here's the beautiful news. Joseph didn't stay in Egypt long. Egypt is also a temporary place. You don't live in Egypt. Come on, somebody. Out of Egypt, we will go. We don't live in Egypt. We visit Egypt. We don't set up camp in Egypt. We visit Egypt. We are not, we are not citizens in Egypt. We coming out of Egypt. And this is what you got to tell yourself today for yourself, for your family. I'm coming out of this. I have to get back to Nazareth. I can't stay here. I'm here for a business trip just to get what I need to get, just to fix what I need to fix. But I'm not staying here. I'm not getting an address here. I'm not being a citizen here. I'm just here on a business trip to fix what needs to be fixed, to fix what needs to be broken. But I'm leaving this place out of Egypt. Me and my family will go. Oh, don't let me preach to myself today. I can't stay here because purpose don't live here. I can't stay here because my assignment is not here. I can't stay here because my mind can't live here. I can't stay here because my heart will be continuing to get crushed here. I can't stay here because my kids can't be who they called to be. So I got to get up out of this place. I got to take my stuff, take my belongings, take everything belong to me. And we got to get the moving because I got to get back to Nazareth because that's where God has called me to be. I can't stay here. You got to tell yourself on the end of this month of December before you shift into January. I can't stay here. Not living here, not staying here. Enemy, you had me here too long. You had my mind here too long. You had my thoughts here too long. You had my identity here too long. Your head speaking over me, saying that, saying that I'm this and I'm that and now I'm believing the words and I'm, I'm believing the lies. And, and you know what? I've been here too long. It is time to get up. Get up. Get back to Nazareth. Because that's where you belong. That's where you belong. As I get ready to close, family, I, I, I wonder, family, I, I wonder how did Joseph and Murray handle all of that grind? That was a lot. To be honest, you go and study the miles. Come on. I get tired just walking to the truck. 
a lot of miles, a lot of baggage. It's a lot of weight. It's a lot of thinking. On the road by yourself, come on. Can you imagine the thoughts and the processing that they were having on a journey all by themselves? The overwhelmingness. Did I really hear from God? Was that really an angel? Did, did, did we miss it? Are, are, are you sure, Joseph? Murray, are you sure? You know what happened. I mean, hey, hey. Those thoughts. Can you imagine the thoughts that they were having on that journey? And here's what God said. It's not, it's not what they did. It's who they was carrying. That's right. it's, it, it's not what they did that was special. Methodology, it, it wasn't practical. It, it wasn't any of that. It was who they were carrying. They were carrying the grace. Yeah. Never forget in your grind who you are carrying. It is not that you are so special. It is what's so special inside of you. Yeah. you were, you're carrying Jesus today. Jesus is the gift in the grind. Never forget who you are carrying in the midst of the pain that you're going through. Never forget the gift that God has given you to face the grind that's being tortured at you each and every day. You still have a gift. Murray and Joseph was able to endure what they were going through because they were carrying something that was so special. So every single time they looked over and they looked at each other, they looked down at baby Jesus. But that wasn't just a baby Jesus. Come on, somebody. That was king of all kings. Come on, who they was carrying. They was carrying the everlasting peace. Come on. They was carrying Alpha and Omega. They, they wasn't just carrying a baby Jesus. They was carrying the one that was getting ready to remove all sin from mankind. They was carrying the blood with them. And all I'm telling you right now, that the blood is with you. So whatever you're going through, you can overcome it because you're carrying grace. You're carrying the blood and the blood never loses its power. So whatever you're going through, whatever Whatever's trying to take you out, whatever's trying to speak to you, don't remember, don't forget you still have the gift. The gift is the blood. The gift is his grace. The gift is his overpoweringness. His gift is the overcoming. I'm speaking to somebody. The gift is here today. And everything that you need is found in the gift that just keep on giving. Proof. You got the gift. If you don't get anything on the 25th, please understand, you already got the most beautiful gift that's already. Oh, you got the gift. You got to tell yourself, I, I feel his anointing. I'm getting ready to close, but I can feel his grace in here. Remind yourself, I got the gift. I got the gift. Might tell your neighbor, you got the gift. Come on. You got the gift. Come on. Your family got the gift. Come on. Your boys got the gift. Come on. Your family tree got the gift. Oh, we got the gift. We got the anointing. We got his purpose. We got his love. We got his peace. We got his hope. We got the gift to keep on moving. We got the gift. As I get ready to close. So while you're pressing on, you're coming up out of Egypt. Before you step in the 2023 family, you're coming up out of Egypt. Before you write your solution, resolution, I'm sorry, you're coming up out of Egypt. Before you step into that new year, I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, you're coming up out of here. You don't live in Egypt. As I get ready to close, I'm going to invite the band back up onto the stage. James 1 and 6. I love this scripture, James 1 and 6. It says, but let him ask in faith. Without doubting, for the doubter is like the surging sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Doubt, 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 doubt. Today, family, here's what we're praying. We're praying that God will begin to cancel out all doubt in your mind. Cancel out all the what ifs in your mind. Maybe you've been wrestling with doubt, doubting my health, 
doubt in my marriage, family, my next step, career, doubt, 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 doubt. Here's where the enemy has been wrestling and touching you at. It's what doubt. Because if he can just keep you in a place of doubt, he can keep you away from grinding. He can keep you away from pressing. He can keep you away from stretching forward for what you know that God has already spoke to you. Joseph had to stop doubting and start believing. And maybe that's where God has you at. Maybe that's where God has you at. And that's where we're going to pray. It's all heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. I can feel his grace in here. For our online family as well, I can, I can, can even hear the Holy Spirit even speaking right now. And he, he's simply saying, he's simply saying, change your language. You need to change your language going into 2023. Stop agreeing and start decreeing. And God is also saying, if you don't even know what to say, read his word and release his word. If you've been struggling, if you're in here right now, if you've been struggling with praying, if you've been struggling with having conversations with God, if you've been struggling with with even believing the possibility that God can do it, God is saying, try my word at it. Try my word at it. Read my word out loud and watch what I would do. You may not have the words. God said, I, have, I am the word. Decree his word. So Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you in this moment. We thank you that you are the reason for the season. You are the living word. There's a grind in this gift. There's a gift in this grind. So everybody that's present even right now, we thank you that you will anoint our minds in this season. The chaos, the busyness, the family, the running, the going. Let us find time in this season to sit at your feet and become undone. To be set apart for something better. To be set apart to glorify you, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you so much that we're coming out of this and we're stepping into something so much better because the gift is here. Amen? Amen. I invite you to your feet, family. If you have your communion elements, feel free to, to go ahead and grab them. What better way to remember reflect in this time of Christmas season. I don't think of a better way to remember the birth of Jesus Christ than to be reminded of his sacrifice. That he was birthed for a reason so that we can have eternal relationship with our Heavenly Father. See, what I love about communion family, even taking communion as a family today, communion reminds me of a time of remembrance. We remember the sacrifice. This is what I love about Paul. He's saying, take time to pause, family, and be reminded. There's power in the principle of remembrance. As we get ready to unwrap gifts on the 25th, be reminded of the true indeed real gift, the sacrifice that he made for you and I. But not only the power of remembrance, 
It's a power of reflection. That communion gives us an opportunity to reflect on everything that God has already done in our life. Knowing that it wasn't by our strength, our wisdom, but it was by his grace and his mercy and his love. That we achieve nothing in life if it's not through his grace and his mercy. It's a time of reflection. But also, family, it's a time of responding. Not only do we be reminded, not only do we reflect, but as you take communion today, family, and even for our online family, you can pause and go grab some communion elements, crackers of bread. But it's a time to respond. How are you going to respond to the word that God is speaking to you today? So as you grab your communion elements, I love as we get ready to partake, you can go ahead and grab your, your, your bread or your cracker. It's a beautiful moment. As we get ready to celebrate Christmas on next week, we're being reminded of his body. And I love that it reads in 1 Corinthians, it says, for I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he have given thanks, thank you God, when he have given thanks, he broke it. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance. You may eat family. It's always there to help me, family. That's why I love her. In the same way, also he took the cup after the supper and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You may drink, family. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen? Amen. I want you to go ahead and grab your can-do elements. I actually wanted to do a real candle this year, family, but they didn't want me to burn the sanctuary down because we have to come back here and worship. But what I love about this moment of the candlelight portion, I love the scripture in Matthew 5 where it, it talks about let your light shine so that, so that all the good men can see your good works but not just see your works you let your light shine so that God can be glorified. And here's our prayers for you as a family, is that we will continue to be a, a church that will let our light shine. There is no enemy that can blow out this candle. There is no en enemy that can distinguish the flame that God has lit. That so maybe you come in here today and you're full of passion. Let your light shine. Touch somebody else's candle. Touch my candle. There you go. I need it. Touch somebody else's candle. Or maybe you came in here today where you feel as though that your candle is actually getting ready to run out. That you're in the middle of a, a grind. And I just don't know if I'm going to make it past the Anthony. Can I say this today, family? You're in the right place. Link up with some people today. Open up to some people today. Or you can say, hey, just pray for me. You don't got to get into the language. Let the Holy Spirit lead you with the best time. But as Pastor Brenda said earlier, you were created not to do life alone. You were created to link arms with your brothers and your sisters so that your light can shine. 
As we get ready to go into a new year, family, here's our prayer for Celebration Church, is that we will be a church that's so engaged in the gospel and the community that this light will never go out, that this light will, will begin to increase, that there will be candles all the way back to our soundstage. There will be candles all over this DMV region. There will be candles all over this global not to lift up a banner of celebration, but always lift up the banner of Jesus Christ. Because there are still souls that need to be saved. There are still marriages that need to be held. There are kids that still need to be proclaimed and anointed and sent and trained in the right direction. Until we don't need to do that, we will continue to let our light so shine. So as we get ready to go back into worship, let's pray over you. Then we're gonna go back into worship. Can you pray back? God, I thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. I thank you, Lord God, and everything, Lord God, that, that is in the undoing, I thank that you are whole. I thank you, Lord God, that you see everything about us, Father, but you're still reckless for us, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that your love, your love, your love has no boundaries, Lord God. Your love, Lord God, oh God, it consumes us, Lord. I thank you, Father that you are a good, good father towards us, Lord. You make us whole, Father. You see the areas in our lives, Lord God, where we lack, Father, and still you wanna pour in, Lord God. You wanna pour in, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that you're not just the light, but you made us light. I thank you, Father, that you're not just a beacon of hope, but you made us hope to others, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that you're not just the bread, Lord God, that you've also given us other things that we can sow, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that you so fit to make us sowers, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that this is a partnership and not just a you thing, but a us thing, Lord God. You made us a part of the kingship, Lord God. You made us a part of the royalty, Lord. And I thank you for that, Lord God. You've given us a name. You didn't just say that you are the I am, but you also said that we are part of I am. We're part of this. This is an exchange thing. This is a relationship, a partnership, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that you have linked with us, Lord God, with our souls. This is a partnership. This is a us thing. I thank you, Lord God, that in this season of undoing of the things that wish to keep us bound, in this season of undoing of our past things that desires to track us down, in the season of the undoing of the mental things that wish to keep us captive, in the season of the undoing, you are whole. And you're causing us to be whole. You're causing us to see ourselves differently because you said there is something better out there waiting for us. There is something that is gonna cause us to mount up out like wings and soar like eagles. And so we have to let go of the things that wish to keep us captive. So in the undoing, you are whole. In the undoing, I pray that we trust you like never before, Lord God. I thank you for salvation. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for salvation. 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 In all that I've done, I thank you for salvation. In all that I've been, I thank you for salvation. In any part of my identity, I thank you for salvation. God said, salvation is your portion. Salvation is yours. There's nothing you can do <laughs> to not get it. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. If you open your mouth and you confess, it's yours. The enemy don't have the authority to hold it back from you. Because Jesus came that you may have life and have life more abundantly. And the devil's desire is to rob you of that. But that has been counseled. It is in Jesus' name that I pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Now is the time that we get to continue worship through giving. 
And in my church in South Carolina, we cheer. So whenever we get the opportunity to worship through giving, we just cheer like it's, you know, FIFA or football or whatever. Um, so we're just going to shout out to God for the opportunity to give this morning. Amen. So in Proverbs 19, 17, it reads, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. Uh, the definition of generous is showing a readiness to give more of something as money or time than is strictly necessary or expected. So the opportunity to give is just that, an opportunity. It's not a requirement, um, but it is mentioned a lot in scripture. And so it seems to be something that God cares about. And what I've learned about giving is that it's not necessarily about uh, the poor, the people, whoever you feel like you're giving to. It's a heart posture. So when God gives you the opportunity to give, just like there's opportunities right now to give on the screen, it gives you a chance to learn what it looks like to sacrifice to learn what it looks like to think of someone or something greater than you and I count it a blessing and a joy amen so as you consider what it is that God has given you consider giving back a portion to him uh, when I was growing up my parents had a rule in our house anytime we earned money because I I didn't get an allowance I don't know if anybody was like me I didn't get an allowance so I had to work and um, one of my jobs I decided my neighbors I was gonna go around and like pick onions from their yard who knew I don't know it's a hustle and so when I <laughs> when I picked those onions I would bring the money home and then my parents would say okay you have three things that you can do with money you can give some save some and spend some so that's something that I encourage you all if you aren't already doing this um, to consider that and then some of that that you're going to give consider giving to a house that gives so much to so many in the community amen so let us pray over our gifts Lord, thank you for the opportunity for us to give. Thank you for um, blessing us in so many ways, more than financial, but um, just to wake up this morning to worship, to spend time in your presence. So Lord, we thank you and we bless the givers and those um, that have in their heart to give, but don't necessarily have in their pockets. Lord, um, I pray just incredible blessings over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Merry Christmas, church. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm so excited that I get to say that. You know, sometimes now, let's be honest, right? You have to say happy holidays or season's greetings. But I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord, right? So I can say Merry Christmas to you all. Um, thank you, family, for being with us um, here on today. Couple quick announcements. So on Christmas Day, um, we'll be meeting online, just not in per um, not in person. So there's church. It's not a day off from church. You're just gonna have church um, at home with your family on Christmas Day, and then the same for the next Sunday, January first. Um, Chris, oh, no, church online. Yeah. Christmas Day online. New Year Day online. So um, then we'll see you the following. Uh, Sunday after that. So if you remember, uh, Celebration DC is where you need to be in 2023. I'm from Brooklyn. I can freestyle. So, right? Like we're gonna get. I feel like we should like get T-shirts or something. Yeah, Celebration DC is where you need to be. 2023. Done. 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 Um, and then, then in the spirit of this, we actually have a little church after party. Clap. clap. Clap, 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 clap. Okay, so what that looks like, um, and this is where I stop smiling at Casey for a second. We have a chili cook-off. We have both entered said chili cook-off. So at this time, there is a separation. <laughs> We're not friends after this. Uh, we will resume our friendship after I am declared the winner, and it's fine. But um, so at this service, this is something just from like our pastors um, on down that's big. This is what doing life looks like together. It's about connecting. Chili, yes, sure. But honestly, it's just, 
an opportunity for us to connect because we believe in faith and fellowship and family and fun. So, you know, sometimes you just kind of leave and you go home and you run off. No, please stay. Join us in the lobby. We have like a fun kind of game as well to play as well as you being able to judge. I think we have five, five chilies. There's something for everyone. It's like vegetarian over there. Um, I mean, great vegetarian, you know. I, you love, I didn't, was it with the onions from South Carolina? I don't know. I didn't expect the vegetarian. So we have vegetarians. We have um, chicken chili, regular chili, uh, turkey. So you, there's something for everyone. But more so, please, please join us um, so we can connect. And then you can, you know, take the chance to get to know each other a little better. Thank you, Shamina. And now is the time, now that we've learned all of the goodness that's going to be happening afterwards, I'm going to let you go eat it. So let's do the benediction <laughs> and uh, let's go ahead and bow our heads. Lord, thank you for um, bringing us together. Thank you for uh, the message that came forth and that we learned that today, if we feel like we're in Egypt, that this is our, our freedom song, Lord. And so I pray that you just remind us of this word throughout the week and that uh, we are encouraged to bless others through the message that we heard today. And um, to close with Numbers 6, 24 through 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.